a shallow depth of field gives that cinematic look that every indie filmmaker loves. What is it and how do we accomplish it? Depth of field on this episode of The Light Journal. Picture Greece in 4th century BC. The great philosopher Aristotle noticed something interesting on one of his walks. It was during a partial solar eclipse. He noticed that tiny spaces between crossed leaves projected little images of the eclipse on the ground. This photo was taken during a recent eclipse. It must be similar to what Aristotle saw. These dapples of light are actually images of the sun. The smaller the hole the light passes through, Aristotle observed, the clearer the image. Here I have a homemade solar eclipse, made from a lighting instrument and a theatrical gobo. And this is a camera obscura, literally a dark room. On the front is a variable aperture to let in different amounts of light. On the back is a piece of vellum, which is semi-transparent, and the image will resolve here. With a wide aperture, the image does not resolve very well, but when I stop down to nearly a pinhole, suddenly we can make out the crescent shape. Early camera obscura used a tent or an entire room to collect the light coming in from a tiny hole in the wall. Artists could then paint on a canvas to reproduce a realistic image of a landscape or a building. Note that the image is projected upside down. How does this work? Well, light coming from an object normally scatters in all directions. Creating an aperture restricts the light somewhat so that only some of the rays make it through the opening. Make the aperture really tiny and only a small subset of rays makes it through, forming a coherent image. So if I take my camera obscura and I put a piece of film in the back, I'm just going to secure it. Then I seal it up and the only opening is this little aperture in the front. What I have is a pinhole camera. Of course, when I do this for real, I have to load it in complete darkness so I don't flash the film. What's interesting is I don't have to worry about focus or even having a lens. Everything will be in focus as long as this aperture is very, very small. Wow, so pinhole cameras are really great. Why do I need a lens at all? Well, lenses allow more light to come into the camera. That means you don't have to expose the film as long and you can shoot with less light. The glass elements focus the light to resolve an image on the plane of the film. Let's see, I'm aiming this out the window at a distant object. and I have a lens in here with a focal length of 285 millimeters. That's the distance from inside the lens to the image plane. Place film or a sensor there and voila, the image will be in focus. Now this formula for focal length only works for objects that are essentially infinitely far away. For closer objects, the distance to the image plane must be adjusted. Of course, this is all very simplified. Camera lenses actually have several glass elements to correct distortion and allow for easy focusing and zooming. Lenses contain an adjustable diaphragm or aperture to let in a variable amount of light. When the aperture is wide open, there is a very shallow depth of field, meaning there's only a small range in which the subject is in focus. Anything closer or farther away is noticeably blurry. Why is that? Let's focus on a single dot of light for this demonstration. When the dot moves, the image projected on the film or sensor expands to become a circle. This is called a circle of confusion, and the bigger the circle, the more out of focus the image is. 
If each dot of light becomes a circle, that's a blurry image. Let's stop down our aperture and do that test again. With a tiny opening to the camera, like a pinhole or a very high f-stop, the dot will essentially focus anywhere. If the camera or subject moves, everything still appears to be in focus. The shot is then said to have deep focus, or a large or deep depth of field. This was a look favored by Hitchcock and other mid-century filmmakers. It allowed them to put a lot of information in a scene and create complex, deep staging. But shooting stop down means you need a lot of light. Other factors influence depth of field. Wider lenses, as a rule, have a larger depth of field. Longer lenses have a shallower depth of field for the same framing. Of course, different focal lengths will also change the composition of the scene, as you can see here. Another factor is the sensor size in the camera. This camcorder has a 1 3rd inch type sensor. It's actually 6 millimeters across. This DSLR is a full frame sensor. It's 36 millimeters across. This camcorder has a variable zoom lens. If we set that to 22 millimeters, that actually looks the same as a 135 millimeter lens on the DSLR. That's a huge difference. And remember, a longer lens is going to give a shallower depth of field. So generally speaking, cameras with a large image sensor will have a shallower depth of field. Also note that focus changes more dramatically the closer the subject is to the camera. At this distance, your depth of field might be less than an inch. Out here, several feet one way or the other doesn't make much difference. And for the same reason, the depth of field is bigger behind the subject than in front. Here, more of the scene is in focus behind the model than in front of her. So as you can see, depth of field is a trade-off. A shallow depth of field isolates your subject and gives you that nice blurry background. And you don't need a lot of light since your aperture is wide open. However, if you're shooting documentaries or news where you can't set up every shot, or you need a lot of the scene to actually be in focus, it's going to be a struggle to keep everything sharp. A large depth of field allows for deep staging, and you have less of a focus issue. But since you're using a small aperture, you'll either need a lot of light or a more sensitive camera setting, which can introduce image noise. Well, I hope that gives you some introduction to depth of field. There's more information on our website. Until next time, I'm Sandy Chase for The Light Journal.